Hey everybody, my name is Dowden, and in this video, we're going to be learning how to make music like Guy J. This is a highly requested video that I'm really excited to share with you. First, we're going to be looking at the bass line, which is a little bit intricate, but very groovy and exciting. Then we're going to look at the detailed drums and the heavy layers of percussive elements that are used in Guy J's tracks. And last, we're going to be looking at the melodies that give this type of progressive house, and especially Guy J, his identity. Okay, so I'm going to get started, but before I do, I wanted to kind of explain how this video is going to work. It's a little bit different than some of the other how to make music videos that I have, and the reason being is this one is pretty complicated. Uh, when the tracks are overly complicated and it has a ton of information, I would rather give you the best quality of an explanation that I can give you instead of actually writing out the track. Um, I will show you all the different instruments, all the effects I'm using, and the sounds that I'm using. I'll include it in the download of the actual file, the project file, the, any samples that I can give to you, I will, and uh, any um, any of the pads and, and sounds that maybe you don't have the synths for, I'll bounce that out to audio so you can still hear what it sounds like in the project. I would have liked to rewrite the track along with you, but I think it would just take too much time because there is a lot going on. There's a lot of layers and it did take me quite a while to kind of make everything fit and sit properly um, because the track is so intricate. And that's one of the things that we love about Guy J is that his tracks have just so much information in them, but it all just fits so, so nicely and it just makes for really, really good music. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go through every channel from top to bottom and explain how I was able to either create this sound or resample this sound to make different, uh, different pads and different instruments and things like that, and the importance of each of these layers. The first thing I'm gonna show you is the kick, and the kick is very important in terms of this style of music for being really, really nice and punchy without being too overpowering in the sub. This progressive that's a bit more floaty and a bit more groovy, and it's not so uh, you know choppy, it's more a full on long kind of progression and it's a full on kind of sound where nothing really stands out that that much. It's not like it's very, very powerful sound here and very powerful sound here. It's a lot of instruments coming together. And because there's so many instruments, a nice punchy kick can really help drive it through the mix. So let's listen to this kick real quick. It's three layers here and I will actually combine this into one so you can have the sample uh, for your project, but it's just gonna be this kick here layered with this one. And then some EQ. And then I'll actually add a compressor on top of that as well, which I forgot to do. Just really, really hard and slight compression just to kind of glue it all together. Really, really subtle. And I'm putting a fast attack time because I want to grab the instant transients. I want to grab Im the immediate sound here. I don't want any peaks kind of getting through, and then I'll just boost that by maybe 1 dB. Only 1.5. It's pretty, probably going to be inaudible. Uh, it's just kind of to make sure that the kick is not peaking anywhere, and that it's a little bit more flat uh, in terms of the transients. It's all kind of one sound. Okay, pretty, pretty basic. Um, the three layered kicks, I just took this bottom end and a little bit of the high end of this one. Uh, I took the mid of this one from around 400 hertz, 500 hertz up to about 1.5, 2000. And then this layer, I just took this kind of the same thing. Don't want that low end, so I'm just going to take it like that. And now we have the high end of this click. Mid. Maybe a little bit lower. And then the bass and the punch. A lot of punch in terms of this kick can usually come around the 100 to 200 mark, but you also have to be careful that if you push it up too much, you kind of get a little bit of boxiness. Let me take a little bit out here. Uh, it's already pretty punchy as is, so I'm not going to put too much EQ on that. But if you find that your kick is lacking a little bit of punch, it could be because of this area here. It's just lacking a little bit. It kind of, uh, especially with these kicks, it's a really short, almost like a stab of that mid 
octave bass, the 100, maybe 80 hertz to 150, 200 hertz. Uh, a really nice punch can sometimes come from that, especially in progressive, where it's like that, that punch just hits really quick, and it's just enough to really bring the, that kick forward in the mix. Um, usually the sample selection plays a really big por uh, part of that as well, so choosing the right uh, sampled kicks that are punchy already will be a way easier than trying to make your kicks punchy in the long run. Okay, moving on to the bass. The bass is, uh, has quite a few layers here, and when you're working with your bass in terms of Guy J tracks and these progressive house tracks, you want a lot of layers usually because you want it to be very interesting to the listener and you uh, want it to sound really intricate, but not overdoing it. So it's really important to make sure that the bass lines that you have are groovy, that they're catchy and they're hooky, and that you're not just putting in a bunch of layers just to fill an empty space. But on the other hand, if you put too little uh, or too much, it can sound either overcrowded or not really interesting enough. I personally put quite a few layers in this one, so let's take a listen to it. Uh, and then we'll listen, we'll listen to it as is, and then break down each of the layers. Along with the kick. I'll just go to this part here. Without the kick. So you can hear that it's groovy and it's catchy and it has quite a few hooks inside of it. So let's break it down a little bit more. I'll open this up. We can take a look at the MIDI information. And let's go to the first layer here. So this is the bass top. And this is going to be the high end of the bass uh, that is going to be more noticeable to the ear. And it's going to carry most of the tonal weight. But if you notice that it's not the exact same as my sub here. So my sub goes like this. So that's my bass line. That's the main part of the bass. We have the kick and the bass. Let's listen to just those two together again. I'll shrink this kick down. Very proggy bass line. You hear it in a lot of songs. Uh, it has some harmonic information as well. So if we look at the sound, we have our sub here. We can turn this off and listen to just the high end of this, this sub bass here. Still very subby, I didn't realize how much sub it actually has on it there. But just in case we have this extra sub here to give it a little bit more volume. But this sound itself is full of harmonic content. You can see the waveform itself. It's the Monster 1 inside of Serum. Uh, it has a ton of harmonic content. So we have uh, a lot going on to give it a sense of depth. And in terms of being able to actually hear it come through the speakers, uh, if we're not just using just a solid sine wave for the sub bass, which you definitely could use, but adding this harmonic content gives us a little bit more oomph and it comes through just a little bit harder. But we have to be careful because if you look closely, you can see there's some bumps around here as well. Let me make sure we key them in here. So I'm in, I'm in D. So if we look at the sub, we have right here this really hard, I'm going to turn this down for a sec, we have this really high frequency in D. Uh, right here, D, 36.5 hertz. Then we go up and the octave will have another D. And then we'll have another octave here, right here for D. So those are all good because we're adding that sub layer, we're adding that mid bass, then we're adding another layer of sub, uh, of, of bass rather. But I don't know why I'm taking this up. This should actually be down. Uh, right here we have a little bit of content on the harmonic, on the A. And then we have it again here. And because it is, uh, it's in the same key as the, the D is, the D minor, it's still gonna sound pleasant, but it's gonna muddy up our mix a little bit because we're having too many strong bass notes. You have these bass notes that, uh, you know, your sub frequencies, you should really only be having that one main sub frequency because you don't wanna be competing for sub frequencies. So uh, what I would do is I would actually just make sure that I'm cutting out this information here. I don't want that low sub A. I'm gonna duplicate this because I really wanna make sure that I'm removing as much of that information as I can. And I'll definitely go back in when I'm doing my final mixing stages and really making sure that we're not getting any issues here. Uh, maybe use a stronger EQ that can remove more information. Um, and then right here I have this A. I'm not so worried about this A because it is a bit higher and I can kind of get away with it, but I, I am going to actually remove a little bit more as well from there. So let me open up this one. Number three. 
make this really narrow. And I'm going to remove a little bit of that A. Where did it go? Right here. And I'll replicate that again here. Number three. And remove that A. You can see all the little harmonics here as well. They're very quiet, but they are adding a bit of richness. And I'll show you what the difference is. But just by, uh, I'll cut out all the sound here. I'll do the same for this one. That's more pure. It has just the sub uh, sine wave here, and then the octave, and then a little bit of information here. Try and get rid of all of it there. So we're just listening to the two. But I want a little bit of that harmonic content. Um, there we go, back to where we were. And that's going to help us keep our mix just a little bit cleaner. Okay, moving on to the next sound. Okay, so I have this bass accent. We can listen to it. You see that it has a bit of subcontent. So I want to remove that subcontent because I don't want it to interfere with the other sound. But if we look closely, it's not actually hitting the same time as the sub. So we can leave a little bit of bass content in there. It's not going to interfere too much. It's there just to give it a little bit of an accent. And that's what's important when we're writing these bass lines, like I mentioned, is keeping them interesting and making sure that we're not just adding random notes in, but we're adding notes that help it maintain that groove, that keep it rolling, that keep it interesting. Last, we have this last accent here. Just a pluck. I'll actually show you how this pluck was made uh, really quickly inside of Serum. Uh, it's just a preset ampology that I tweaked a little bit. Pretty simple. It just has a filter on here, uh, some delay. I actually turned the delay off, so we can just get rid of that. Uh, it's just with some multi-band compression and this filter on here. We can hear without much different. And then the oscillator is just this 40881. And then uh, I'm not really sure what this oscillator is here, but uh, just two oscillators on with this filter cut off um, being attenuated with this envelope too. So without that, and then with. And then envelope one just looks like this. So I will include these into the uh, the project file, um, but I won't go into the nitty gritty of every single synth. Um, I won't recreate every single synth because uh, it would just take too much time for this uh, this video. But I will show you basically how the sounds are made. Then we have this other accent, like I showed you. Again, adding value to that sound, adding value to the bass line. It's catchy, it's groovy. Just make sure that when you're writing these bass lines, you're choosing the right, uh, the right placement and arrangement of these sounds so that it's interesting, it makes you wanna bob your head, it makes you wanna dance. Uh, to make this sound, just a simple pluck, uh, I probably, yep, I use Ampology again. It's a really nice um, it's a really nice preset that I start with a lot of the time because it already has the pluck kind of built into it with the envelopes and the amplitude and the filtering. And then uh, I just change out some of the the wavetable positions here. Uh, sorry, the wavetable. So this is Sludge Crank and this is the 4088 again. Moving on to our drums. The bread and butter of Guy J tracks are his percussive elements. His drums are always so on point. To get these progressive house drums, you need a lot of groove, a lot of swing, and you need a lot of airiness, but also enough punch that it's carrying the track. So let's listen to the drums on their own in the full, uh, the full area here. And then again with the kick. There's a lot to cover, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. We have this hat that is wide. This is uh, one of the more important elements of the, the hi-hats and the percussive elements in here. And this is because this wide hi-hat is really good at making it sound more interesting and really, really nice to the ear, pleasant to the ear if you're using headphones or speakers, not so much in mono. 
but it's that nice wide spread that's going to give it a bit of swing because it's uh, using a stereo delay. It's not going to be exactly on time. It's going to be a little bit delayed on that uh, the stereo delay from either the left or the right ear. And I'll show you that right here with this has effect. So that is delaying 24.1 milliseconds from left to right. So it's going to play in the left, then 24.1 milliseconds, it's going to play in the right. And this is going to make it sound nice and wide. And also give us a little bit of that swing. If we look at the MIDI information, I also have this second hat. And the velocity is really low on these notes, and they're there just to give it a little bit more of a, a swingy organic feel, a little bit more interesting to the ear. That is also really important in making these tracks really great. It's having these little accents, these little little things here and there that are so subtle that you don't really hear them until you take so many of them away or put so many in that it's just, it's almost like you don't pick up on them. They're ghost notes, but they're there and they make it much more interesting. So we can listen with and without and see if you can notice the difference. Obviously, you can notice the difference, but you can pick up that with those little notes, it's a little bit more swingy and a little bit more interesting. So again, the wide hat is going to be important because it's going to give us a sense of that width and then allow us to have a more mono or centered hi-hat to give us that punch. So what I've done here is, uh, actually one more thing I want to note is that I did put um, a vocoder on this hi-hat and let's listen with and without the vocoder big difference so what this is doing is actually filtering out a lot of that low end and then rising up in the high end and then i've added this release to 329 milliseconds so this makes the sound have a little bit more tail end this hat's pretty punchy we kind of want to filter out the first you know thousand maybe the band's going up pretty high the first half or three quarters of that sound to be filtered out so we're just getting that nice high end because we don't need that punchiness or that lower section of the sound because we're going to have that in the rest of our hat here in the punch hat and you don't need to use a vocoder for this you can actually use an eq but with the vocoder i can add this release And it gives me more tail into that sound, which makes it more of a long hat. Okay, moving on to the punch hat. So this one is uh, two hats, actually. So if we listen to the one, nice and punchy, crispy hat. Not much going on here, just some EQ filtering out that low end. But what's important is adding this second little groovy, uh, swingy hat. And it's just the exact same hat. But the only difference is I've added a bit of fade in and I've moved this up so that it's just the tail and the back, uh, like the, the last three quarters of the sound. And that's just so we don't get that punchiness twice. If it's the punchiness twice, it's a little bit too abrupt. And then with the fade in, a little bit more uh, subtle, a little bit calmer, and it's not so aggressive. Going into the shaker groove. So I use loops a lot of the time for the shaker groove because there is some really, really, really great loops that I just don't have the patience or the skill to make as good as these people that make these sample packs. They spend a lot, a lot of time and practice making these amazing sample packs. This is a, a PML shaker and it just sounds great. It's got a lot of swing to it. I also have a vocoder on it. I'll turn that off. And then the vocoder just to give it a bit more crispiness and make it my own. Next is going to be this shaker accent. And this is going to give it just a little bit of low end, uh, nothing too crazy. And then if you look at the actual MIDI information, I have this velocity on here. And this velocity is going to change the velocity of the, the hi-hat so that it plays a little bit different every single note. Um, and that's with the random setting here. So I turn this random setting off. It's going to be the same repeated four notes. Do, 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 do. And we can look at the MIDI information. You can see quiet, halfway, high, halfway, quiet. And that's a pretty common groove. Kind of 
kind of like a wave. Uh, but with this velocity plugin, uh, this MIDI effect, it's going to give it a bit of randomness as well. So now we have this 21. It's going to allow those velocity notes to move up and down randomly and around, I'm assuming, 21% of the time, uh, or is it 21 of the velocity um, information? So that gives it a little bit more of an organic, realistic feel. It's a bit more random now. Then we have the shaker wide. And I have this hi-hat here, and I've just taken the sample of an open hi-hat. Filtered out a lot of the low end, compressed it, auto pan, the has effects. So this is that stereo delay I was talking about. Let's listen with and without. Much wider. And then I have that fade in. So without the fade in and without this being kind of pulled up here, it's much more aggressive. But with the fade in and it moved up here, it's much calmer, more subtle, more of a shaker sound. And this compressor is actually a sidechain compression for the kick. So when the kick's hitting, that click is coming through on that kick, and it's kind of pushing down those shakers to make it a little bit more groovy as well. So it's like, right? When that kick's hitting, it's, that's the way it was supposed to go. So it's a little bit quieter when the kick hits, and then it comes back up in volume, and that's a little bit quieter, and it kind of gives it a swing feel as well. Moving on to our clap. Uh, actually, let's listen to all of these sounds individually with and without. So we have all the shakers and the hats moving at the same time. Let's take a listen. Pretty cool, right? Lots of information going on, uh, lots of instruments, but they're all in their own place. They're all doing something that's adding value to the loop. Next, we have our clap. And the clap is super simple. Just a clap. Two claps, it looks like, that I've layered up. But if you look closely, I've actually nudged one forward a little bit to make it a little bit uh, more interesting to the ear. So it's a little bit like two claps going on at the same time. It's a little bit more interesting, uh, a little trickier to the ear. And then I've added this erosion plugin. And then I've sent the claps to the erosion plugin. So the erosion, let's turn it off and on and see the difference. It's very subtle, but it's adding a bit more crunch to the clap using this erosion uh, tool. So it's a uh, it's essentially a distortion uh, filtering plugin. It's giving just a little bit of um, an oomph to these claps. I actually do a two minute tutorial on erosion, so you can check that out and uh, get the full breakdown of using erosion, but it's just adding a bit of uh, mid weight to these claps. Uh, pretty simple, there's not really too much going on with the clap uh, aside from that. And let's go into the percussions. I have, I think it's just two here. So I have, very simple. This is just one layer of many. So again, if we listen with, uh, we can just turn the metronome on for now. You can hear that it's groovy again, that it's not just randomly placed, that it has its place in the loop. You always want to make sure, at least in my opinion, that when you're adding something, it is, you know, to, to benefit the loop, and it's not just to, to fill space. So if you just throw these in randomly, it's not going to sound nearly as good. Let's try it maybe over here. Right? Doesn't sound nearly as good as... Okay, moving on to the perk roll. So this is a little uh, filtered roll, uh, loop that I got.
And I didn't make this myself, but it is a loop that sounds like what they did is just took a bunch of claps and maybe some toms and some slapping noises, played them along, and then put an auto filter on that. Uh, I also added my own effects, so I compressed it, and let's turn everything off. Let's group this all together and listen without. A lot of low end, very dynamic. With this, I took the EQ, I lower, took out the low end, I pushed up the high end, I compressed it so it's less dynamic, a little bit more fl uh, flat sounding, uh, which is sometimes what you want. And then multi band dynamics to uh, really change the sound as well. And then some more EQing. Okay, uh, and let's listen to the difference that just this one percussive loop makes to the entire drum loop. It's actually a really, really important part of this loop. Pretty big difference. So the percussive elements are giving it that rolling feeling. It's giving it that that bit of midsection that's kind of uh, unique to the to the track. It kind of stands out in a way that makes your track sound different than any other track by not just relying on shakers, hi hats, and the clap. There's some percussive elements there too, but this perk roll, as I called it, is very interesting to hear to listen to. And Guy J does this in a lot of his tracks. He does this in pretty much every track. A lot of his IDs, especially uh, more of his club oriented tracks. He puts these weird percussive loops, these weird things in the background, people talking, things like that. And it makes it really interesting to the ear and really groovy. So I definitely suggest doing this for your own tracks, grabbing random loops, playing things in, in groovy fashion, and then recording them and putting them in the background. Uh, okay, moving on to the toms. This is important to note as well. When you're putting in toms and bongos and things of, the, of that nature, it can really help elevate your track to have it uh, tonal. So have it in the tone of the track, the key of the track. And if you listen to these toms, they're not just random toms. They actually, uh, they actually accent the track in a way by being in key with the track. You can see the tuner down here is at D. And it's that tonal weight that, that elevates the track. Whoops, sorry, I'll listen to just the drums and the kick in the bass. So having that in the same key is going to kind of let the listener know even before any of the other notes are in play, just the drums, we can even turn the bass off. You can already have an idea of what the tone is going to be of the track and the key. Very progressive, very, very popular for uh, progressive houses, those little toms there. Moving on to the synths. So now there is actually isn't too, too much going on with the synths for the most part. A lot of this track is percussive driven, but there are some really important elements in, in the actual rhythm of the track that are due to these rhythmic plucks. So uh, I've noticed this in a lot of guys' tracks that he does um, not just percussive elements to keep the rhythm going, but he uses plucks or pads and things of that nature to keep the, uh, the, the melodic side of it forward as well as the rhythm. So let's take a listen to these plucks here. They're quiet, they're subtle, but if you listen to it in the context of the track, They're just ear candy. They're, they're just in the background right now at the beginning of the track, and it sets the tone of the track. It gives you the key of the track, it gives you the vibe of the track, and it is really just uh, there to, to keep the listener engaged and interesting, and it sets a precedent for the track. Uh, so as the track progresses, it opens up the filter a little bit. And it's really, really simple. All it is is this little kind of arpy type sound that I made. Um, just going from C down to A, up to C, and then D. Lots of delay on there, and it's just a simple, simple wavetable shape. Sawtooth wave here with some filtering, 
And then I have in the matrix filter going in the amplitude envelope too. So it's just a little, uh, little bit of a, a plucky sound that is inside of the wavetable. Super simple to make. And I will include that, of course, in the, the project file. Some other elements that are kind of percussive y. Uh, well, they are percussive They're almost drums, I guess, is this up thing. And I, I believe I included this in another video that I did where I just recorded myself saying the word up. I don't know why, but it worked out. And this is what it sounds like. Has a has effect on it, which is that stereo delay. And the reason I EQ to here is to get that resonant frequency and really push it up. Going back to the rhythmic plucks here, I have the EQ. Uh, this is some mid side EQ. So I'm pushing the sides of the stereo mix and I am reducing the, um, the mid of the signal in both the sides and the mid. And that's going to make it sound wider while retaining um, the mid information that I have here. And it's going to sound, hopefully, sound really good in both mono and in stereo due to this. Uh, then I have some compression, which I don't even think I'm using. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. And then uh, Replica, which is just a delay plugin. So I'll, I'll swap that out for an actual delay before I export it uh, for you. Uh, next, we have these, what I just called noises. And I, uh, the best way that I can describe these are just little atmospheres in the background, little sounds that are going to make the sound more interesting. Guy J does this a lot, especially in his darker tracks, where he takes really creepy, eerie sounds and throws them in randomly and it just uh it just elevates the track a lot and it's it's really really cool so we'll just take a listen to a couple of these so i i don't remember exactly how i made those but i'm pretty confident that i used uh a uh, delay plugin, granular delay or the grain delay, and it's just a delay plugin that you can put different noise, uh, different sounds on. And I use it in one of the other sounds uh, going forward, so I'll dive into it a little bit more once we get there. But uh, it just it gives you a ton of pre, um, a ton of parameters that you can mess around with and make really interesting and really creepy sounding uh, sounds, and then you can just throw percussive elements in there and re-record them. Going on to the pad here, this is a preset and massive that I've tweaked a little bit. And then I have my EQing and then vocoder. Not really sure what the vocoder is on there for. So I'm probably just going to remove that. Okay, moving on to the fill pad. So the, the fill pads are there to uh, carry the melody of the track. A lot of these tracks, uh, they won't just rely on lead sounds. They'll rely on little atmospheric pads and plucks and things in the background that are carrying the track. A lot of these tracks are like seven to nine minutes long. And the reason for that is that they can maintain that interest by doing things like adding these pads. So if I go in and just take a listen to this. Very angelic sounding. And 90% of that is from the reverb plugin. So I'll get rid of the realm, uh, just the reverb here. Without reverb, and with. Right, and it's a uh, pigments preset, uh, ancient beings, and I believe I added a second, I might've added the second engine on here, but I can't remember. Uh, Usually what I like to do when I use presets is I like to tweak them. I like to make them my own, um, putting different wavetables, different uh, sounds in there. And I can't remember if I did it with this one, but uh, something that I recommend you do as well. So you're not just grabbing presets out of the box and using them, make them your own, add a lot of effects and processing to them so that they're not just, you know, you're not just taking presets and writing tracks with them. But in this day and age, there is, you know, so many amazing presets, it'd be kind of silly not to use them. Um, but definitely do learn how to make your own presets so that you don't rely totally on them. A little disclaimer. Uh, so yeah, these, these little fill pads, they're just making sure that you're in the right key. This is a, this is a D, and then I think it's C, yeah, C, A, G. Just keeping in the right key of the track, and just literally just play along the track. Just play the track, grab your keyboard. Right, playing different notes and then just recording them either by clicking record here or 
putting in an audio track and just recording a bunch of different sounds. That's what I actually love to do. And that's what I did down here. So I took different pads. I, I'll just show you really quickly what we can do. It's actually a really great, great exercise. So let's go, let's rename this one to pad resampling. And then what you're going to do is just grab, uh, we'll just duplicate this one for now. Get rid of the MIDI information, we don't need that. And just go into this pad and we're going to record here. And change this one to the, what is it, full pad 2. Hit record, hit record here, and then we're just going to arm both the tracks. And then just play something. Okay, and now we have this audio sample. And all I did was put a pigments in there, choose a random preset, and put a ton of reverb and delay on there. Then I go in here. Change the preset, grab anything. I saw it coming, sure. Here how it sounds. Cool, that's another sound. Then go back, hit record. Not the best example, but you get the idea. Now we have this second pad. When we're playing the track. Start again. Cool, now we have another sound. Let's put that into the uh, this delay and reverb here. There you go, now you have these two sounds to work with. Turn this one on. You know what, I'll keep that in, just for the sake of it. Sounds good. I'll leave this one in the two, why not? So it's it's a great it's great practice to, uh, not even practice really, it's a great technique to get a lot of sounds inside of your tracks that you can use as these atmospheres. Just testing all these different presets and different sounds that you can make, different vocal samples, different percussive elements, throwing a ton of reverb and delay on it, and then resampling it and then adding it later. And uh, that's definitely what a lot of progressive artists do. That's definitely what I'm assuming Guy J does because in a lot of his tracks, he has these really, really interesting sounds that come and go throughout the track. Um, going back up to this pad two here, uh, we have this right here. So uh, this is something that I definitely want to touch on. So again, going back to what we just did by resampling something, what you can do now is Insert a MIDI track, grab a sampler, throw that in there, and then grab that audio and throw it in the sampler. And now, when you play the sampler, you play these different notes. Right? But the beauty of this is that you can make some really cool atmospheric pads by doing something with the sustain mode. So we have the sustain on here and we're going to create a loop and then we're going to have a crossfade. And now this is going to kind of loop back and forth. And we've created a pad with this resampled pad that we have here, and then we can play chords with that as well if we want to. Then you add a ton of reverb onto there, and you've just created yourself an even better pad. And it's moving, it's organic, it's, it's kind of modulating back and forth. And you can add modulation as well, make things even more interesting to that pad. But that's what I did here. Okay, moving on to, we'll get rid of this pad resampling, we don't need that anymore. These are some pads that I just recorded in the way that I just showed you. 
and then going further, you can actually take them and transpose them. So that's just the same pad, but I've duplicated it and then transposed it down a whole octave. And then now we have two pads, two atmospheres. And this is being sent to this uh, delay right here, and that has a huge feedback of 90%. We're getting near the end, we're almost done, and we're going to kind of just let the track play out and explain uh, some things about the track being played out. Okay, we have this, I call it POC, because it's just like a... I don't know, it sounds like a robot's version of a... Just a percussive element I made. I put some heavy compression on it with zero attack because I don't want it to be. Uh... Oh, never mind. It's being side chained. Because oh, because it's hitting at the same time as the kick. So if you listen, I don't want it to affect how the kick sounds. So I'm side chain compressing it. I'm gonna do that a little bit more actually. Okay, and. Uh, moving on to, we have all these atmospheres here. So these are all just sounds that I put in the background. <laughs> Same as before, just different pad sounds that I've recorded and just put out, put throughout the track to make it more interesting. They're pretty quiet. They're uh, definitely just there to add a bit of variance to the track. Uh, then I have my white noise, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and that is it. I have this big delay. Just another, uh, another one of these atmospheres here. Okay. So, oh, the last thing that I've, I didn't uh, actually touch on was this pigments here. Um, just another pad that I've chosen. And that's in the breakdown. We'll get to that in a minute. And that's just uh, another element that you can add somewhere in what, which I did in the breakdown uh, to make it a bit more of a breakdown and to give it a bit more to the track. Hey everybody, I just want to take a second to interrupt the video to let you know about the online monthly coaching, one-on-one -on -one lessons, and online production courses that I have to offer. I offer one-on-one -on -one video lessons via Skype so we can work on your track, feedback, mixing, mastering, anything that you want to learn, we can tackle in a one-on-one -on -one video call session. Monthly coaching includes these video sessions as well as email feedback, free downloads, among other things. And the online courses are a learn at your own pace method that you can dive into and take as long as you need and go back as often as you want to learn as well. Check the description below for a link to those as well as some free downloads in the description as well. I do have this lead sound as well. And this lead sound is the same rhythmic plucks here, but now it's more of a lead. It's, it's more aggressive. It's more uh, energetic. I'm going to filter out a little bit more as it's building up in the track. And then I'm going to have it play out in the drop. So we haven't listened to uh, a lot of the track in most of this video. So we're going to listen to this now. And I'm going to uh, explain parts of the track that I chose to do as I'm going. Go ahead and listen. Uh, actually, before we listen, I'm going to explain something that I did in the actual breakdown. You can see the automation here. So taking the kick out of the breakdown, and as the breakdown is opening back up into the buildup and then into the actual drop of the track, you can see that this bass accent is getting a little bit louder. So when you're making tracks and you want to make them a bit more interesting, you don't always have to be adding new elements, new synths, new uh, leads and things like that. You can just change the sounds that you already have. So I've made this pluck, uh, opened up and, and cut off, and you'll hear how it sounds. And that gives it uh, just this, like another element to the actual drop, but without adding a, you know a whole other sound. Because sometimes when you add too much, it can take away from the track. It takes away from the story of the track. Of course, the opposite can happen too. If you don't put too much in the track, then that can happen. And let me tell you, Guy J puts a lot of stuff in his tracks, but dang, he's good at it, and uh, it works for him. So, okay, let's take a listen to the entire track, and I'll just try to give maybe a couple notes as we're listening through.
So we're keeping it interesting. We're adding in that extra element. Some atmospheres. Another element. There's a small breakdown here, just taking out and bringing back in, slowly introducing more and more elements. And those atmospheres are just carrying the track, keeping it interesting, telling the story of the track. Another pad coming in. some automation, turning it up slowly. the second lead accent. Keeping it more interesting, building the track using the same, uh, the same melody, just another layer. Then we also have this shaker that we've added just to make it a little bit more interesting. Little atmospheres adding depth. This lead is getting more and more open with the cutoff filter to keep that track progressing forward, keeping it interesting. Cut out the kick to make it a transition into the breakdown. Filtering out the drums, putting a little bit of delay on the drums, you can hear that again here. We're sending it for delay. That's a good transition into the breakdown. So you'll hear this lead building up and you'll also hear that bass accent kind of opening up to make it more interesting on the actual drop. And then I have this lead coming up to kind of carry the track as the lead does.
and in the uh, in the full version of the track, I would have this go a little bit longer, but for the sake of time in the video, I've shortened it a little bit. And uh, when I do finish this track, because it will be one of my tracks, uh, definitely, um, I definitely will have this uh, go a little bit longer as well. So uh, last thing that I wanted to touch on um, is the drum bus that I have here that I didn't talk about. I didn't talk about uh, all the buses. So I have the bass bus, uh, just a multiband dynamics on here. So it's just going to be... Uh, just kind of squishing the, the three bands, the top, mid, and the low, and then adding some value to them, adding some, some gain. We, so we're clipping a little bit, so I'm gonna reduce that. And then my uh, drum bus here, I have a glue compressor, and this is really important too, because the glue compressor really helps glue all these sounds together, obviously, but it's really great for just making all of the drums and the top end sound very very together and very very fluent and uh it, it just really helps it sound like one solid layer and i know that sounds pretty obvious but there is a quite a big difference between having it off and on i find It just really brings it a bit more to life, even though it's actually technically squishing the, dyna the dynamics of it, it does sound a little bit more progressive. Is that an adjective I can use? I'm using it. Then we have this gentle squeeze preset. It's just gonna squeeze that top a little bit more and compress it a little bit more. I usually take this off. Uh, this is just for my playback. Um, I might use a second compressor, uh, second compressor, but I'll usually take this off. And then uh, on my bass, I also have the side chain compression from the kick. So when the kick is hitting, it's going to be reducing the entire bass bus so that the kick can punch through a little bit better. I've included the project file for you to download in the description below so that you can take this track and make it something of your own using your own samples and some of your own sounds as well. I've also included the presets, but if you don't have the synths that I'll be using inside the video, that's fine. You can just use the exported audio of those exact stems that I have. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe with notifications on. And if you liked this video and learned something, make sure to give me a thumbs up. You could also comment below any artists, genres, labels, or styles that you'd like me to cover, and I will consider them and potentially do them in the next video.